So at a recent debate, Elizabeth Warren claimed on stage with a straight face that it was only her and Amy Klobuchar that didn't have super PACs. Every other candidate was corrupted by dark money and they had super PACs. Now, I would agree with you if you chose to exclude Bernie Sanders from that conversation, but she didn't. She was implying that Bernie Sanders, like Pete Buttigieg, like Joe Biden, is also corrupt. Now, it's interesting because, I mean, I guess you could technically say that's true if you qualify organizations that are grassroots funded like Our Revolution as a super PAC. Elizabeth Warren, judging by this picture, didn't really have a problem with Our Revolution not too long ago, but now that it's politically expedient to pretend like it's a super PAC, like some Wall Street funded group like Pete Buttigieg has, you know, now she's choosing to attack Bernie Sanders for it. And like the so-called super PACs that Bernie Sanders has, we're talking about the Sunrise Movement. We're talking about National Nurses United. We're talking about Our Revolution. These are grassroots funded organizations that have money because small dollar donations come into them. These are not dark money funded groups created to prop up, you know, a candidate and help them get more donations than the federal contribution. Like if I'm a billionaire, right? If I want to donate more than that 2700 or 2800 maximum to Joe Biden, the only way that I can do that is to donate to one of his super PACs because then I can give them $100,000 and that's one way to get around campaign finance laws. So if you're honestly saying with a straight face that our revolution and the Sunrise Movement is akin to those dark money groups that you know, buy television ads and spend money on behalf of the candidate. I mean, you're, you're just being so disingenuous. You can't not characterize that as a lie because that's basically what it is. I mean, again, on a technicality, you could say, you know what? Sure, we can qualify that as super PACs, but still, even if you said that, you would have to disaggregate them. You'd have to explain there's kind of a big difference between our revolution and Joe Biden's super PAC, Unite the Country. Like, these are very different things. But Elizabeth Warren is a political opportunist. She's a snake. And of course, she's lying about Bernie Sanders. And she thought that that would be one way to get one over on him. And it's not just Elizabeth Warren, to be fair. Pete Buttigieg claims that Bernie Sanders is bankrolled by nine quote-unquote dark money groups. And it's funny because the Sunrise Movement responded saying, Say our name, Pete Buttigieg. We dare you. And look, as Jane pointed out, these are the groups who Buttigieg claims are dark money groups. National Nurses United, the Sunrise Movement, Dream Defenders, Center for Popular Democracy, People's Action, Our Revolution, Make the Road Action, Movement Voter Project, Indivisible Project. These are all grassroots funded organizations, right? And if you're going to say that these are comparable or even in the same category as Joe Biden's super PAC or your super PAC, Pete, which is funded by Wall Street contributors. I mean, you're just, you're a sleazeball. That's all there is to say about it. Now, Elizabeth Warren, she has the endorsement of the PCCC, so it honestly is mind-boggling to me. If we're accepting that she believes our revolution and the Sunrise Movement are super PACs, then why isn't the PCCC a super PAC if they do the same fucking thing? Like, do you understand the double standard here? It's like, Nobody cares about principles or policy. They just want to get one over on the other candidates and lie. And since Bernie Sanders is the front runner, you see all of these people sinking their claws in. They're desperate to say anything about Bernie Sanders. All these Bernie bros are harassing members of the culinary union. Oh, wait, the culinary union's members, not the leadership, but the members actually support Bernie Sanders and Medicare for all. Hmm, nobody brings that up. Like, this is pure desperation. And I do want to read this article from Real Sludge, who sheds a little bit of light about these organizations that Elizabeth Warren claims are super PACs supporting Bernie Sanders. Quote, while that statement may be technically true, not all super PACs are the same. In fact, there's a wide chasm between super PACs backing three Democratic candidates, each funded with six-figure donations from wealthy finance executives, and the super PACs backing Sanders, which consists of a nurses' unions PAC and a coalition of progressive organizations that represent over two million working-class people of color. It's ridiculous to lump groups like Sunrise in with billionaire-funded super PACs. Stephen O'Hanlon, communications director of the youth-led climate group, the Sunrise movement, which is backing Sanders, told Sludge, unlike PACs set up by billionaires to blanket the airwaves with attack ads, Sunrise and other groups were working to represent the working people, young people, and people of color. The Sanders campaign declined to comment for this story. 
In a Meet the Press interview with Chuck Todd on February 9th, Sanders reiterated that he does not want help from outside groups, but he was clear about who makes up these groups. Some of them are nurses, some of them are immigration activists, and some of them are civil rights activists, Sanders said. Todd asked if Sanders would accept help since it's already out there, and the candidate answered, it's legal, what can I do? People have the right to participate in the political process. Now again, let's accept that these groups are super PACs, technically, right? Um, but guess what? Justice Democrats is a super PAC. Elizabeth Warren endorsed a Justice Democrat in this cycle. Wolf PAC is a super PAC, right? These are all super PACs. So there's a real distinction. There's a nuanced conversation to be had here. These are not organizations that propped up specifically for the purpose of allowing one candidate to, you know, get around campaign finance laws and allow their wealthy donors to exceed the maximum contribution by donating to them. These are organizations that existed before this election or popped up because they were catalyzed and coalesced around a single issue like Sunrise, like Dream Defenders, right? So it's just, it's so disingenuous for Elizabeth Warren to try to make it seem as if Bernie Sanders, like Pete Buttigieg and Joe Biden, is just as corrupt because look at all these dark money groups. Like it's, it's beyond pathetic that she's stooping to this, right? Considering she has the support of similar groups like the PCCC, like she has supported our revolution and endorsed Justice Democrats candidates, right? So it's just, it's so phony. But this is why I wanted to talk about this story, right? Because the person who's been the loudest about how bad super PACs are, Elizabeth Warren, well, guess what she has? She's got a brand new shiny super PAC that is bankrolling her. <laughs> I mean, you can't make this shit up. Listen, for those of you not keeping score, that's two huge issues that Elizabeth Warren flipped on within the span of a week. She flipped on the popular vote because after three years of uh, you know, screaming about the need to abolish the Electoral College in favor of just allowing the winner of the popular vote to become the president, which I agree with, by the way. At the last debate, she said, you know what? I'm actually okay with super delegates stealing the nomination away from Bernie Sanders, the person who will likely have the most votes. Now, I'm paraphrasing, but that's essentially what she meant. And now, after, what, one, two weeks of criticizing everyone, including Bernie Sanders, for having super PACs, what does she do? She gets a super PAC herself. This is why Elizabeth Warren can't be trusted. Her political instincts are just horrible. At every chance she gets, it's like she jumps at the opportunity to embarrass herself. And I'll give her credit, she performed exceptionally well at that last debate. But I mean, like, she's either on or she's completely off. And if you want to beat Donald Trump, you can't, you know, roll the dice with someone who may show up to a debate half asleep or might knock it out of the park. You need consistency. And Elizabeth Warren has shown and proven that she's an opportunist more than anything, right? She makes political calculations that are detrimental to her career, but she just doesn't really care about the optics. She doesn't care that... She had the respect and support from progressives, but then she squandered that and is doing nothing to win it back, right? So it's just embarrassing. And the worst part about all of this is that in order to defend her newfangled super PAC, she's trying to hide behind her gender, weaponize identity politics to suggest that, well, you know, since the men have one, uh, I think I should have a super PAC too. This is truly cringeworthy. Take a look. Senator, do you want the super PAC supporting you to stand? Do you want the super PAC supporting you to stand down? So look, the first day I got in this race over a year ago, I said I hope every presidential candidate who comes in will agree: no super PACs for any of us. I renewed that call dozens of times, and I couldn't get a single Democrat to go along with me. Finally, we reached the point a few weeks ago where all of the men who are still in this race and on the debate stage all had either super PACs or they were multi-billionaires and could just, you know, rummage around in their sock drawers and find enough money to be able to fund a campaign. And the only people who didn't have them were the two women. 
And at that point, there are some women around the country who said, you know, that's just not right. So here's where I stand. If all the candidates want to get rid of super PACs, count me in. I'll lead the charge. But that's how it has to be. It can't be the case that a bunch of people keep them and only one or two don't. So that's that's the case. Wow. <laughs> that's so pathetic. So basically, you know, her argument is, I'm happy to get rid of my super PAC, but everyone else has to do it first. So let's, you know, extrapolate a little bit and, you know, envision a situation in the general election where Elizabeth Warren starts taking money from Wall Street. She starts taking money from corporate PACs in the military industrial complex. Can you imagine her excuse? Well, Trump's doing it. So if Trump stops, then I'll stop too. But I'm not going to unilaterally disarm. As Pete likes to say, I'm not going to run this race with one hand, you know, tied, tied behind my back. This is just not how you prove to people that you're a principled progressive. It shows you're desperate. And when that desperation starts to creep in, that's when all of the principles go away. Unbelievable. And yet she is criticizing Bernie Sanders. Oh, no, he has a super PAC. He's funded by dark money groups, and he's basically as corrupt as Joe Biden, people to judge, you know. It is what it is. Elizabeth Warren is such a bad candidate. She is such a bad candidate. And it almost makes me sad that she chose to run for president in 2020. Like, I always wanted her to be president before Bernie Sanders ran in 2016. Um, but, like, just seeing her run in action, it kind of ruined it, right? Like, I was trying to put aside her betrayal in 2016, because we need as much allies as we can get, but we've got to face the music. She's just not an ally. She's not, you know, um, willing to be there for progressives 100% of the time. Sometimes she votes with Donald Trump. Sometimes she'll, you know, stop the TPP or try to stop the TPP or whatever. But I mean, like, at the end of the day, Elizabeth Warren, she just is, she's not great. She's not great. You know, I think that it's probably still accurate to say that she's the second most progressive senator in America, but the distance between... Her and Bernie Sanders is just miles. It's miles. Now, since Bernie Sanders doesn't have a super PAC that runs ads and, you know, has unlimited Wall Street contributions being funneled to it, um, and now Elizabeth Warren does, Bernie Sanders decided to get the last laugh. And he tweeted out, You can't change a corrupt system by taking its money. I am proud to be the only non-billionaire in this race without a super PAC, spending millions of dollars to support me. And there you have it. Elizabeth Warren has nothing to say because she has a super PAC now. You've got a super PAC, so what are you going to do? If you want to argue that our revolution and the Sunrise Movement organizations that you'd be happy to have the endorsements of are super PACs, then make that case. But don't just tell us half-truths, right? Don't give us half the story. Don't be disingenuous and say, well, he has a super PAC. Explain what you mean. Do you honestly believe that Dream Defenders and Our Revolution and the Sunrise Movement are comparable to the Wall Street-funded super PACs that back people like Pete Buttigieg and Joe Biden? If you want to make that case and have that position, fine, but defend it. Don't lie, don't be sneaky and disingenuous like the snake that you are. Just come out and say, I think that these groups are super PACs. A super PAC is a super PAC, and they're technically super PACs, so they're super PACs. Fine, great. But she's not telling you that, because once she says, well, what I'm referring to really is the Sunrise Movement, then people see through her lie, right? They see through it, and they say, oh, isn't Sunrise Movement... The organization that you really wanted to get the endorsement of? I mean, even Pete Buttigieg, as he criticizes organizations like the Sunrise Movement, they explain how he was being really nice to them, trying to butter them up to get that endorsement. But they're a principled organization, and I truly believe they did this objective analysis of all the different climate change proposals, and Bernie's was simply the best. But now, since they're not endorsing Pete Buttigieg or Elizabeth Warren, that's a super PAC. And that's corrupting of Bernie Sanders. Like, politics is such a dirty game. And part of me feels really bad because I, like, I don't want to dunk on Elizabeth Warren because she really isn't the worst candidate in this race. I mean, not even close, right? It's it's uh, Mike Bloomberg, Pete Buttigieg, Joe Biden. They're the worst by far. However, Elizabeth Warren, like, 
just seeing where she was at the start of this race and how far she's fallen, it really is just depressing and sad. I mean, politics is just a dirty game and there's really no heroes in politics. No heroes in politics. Anyone is more than capable of letting you down in the event an opportunity arises where, you know, that's the best course of action to advance their careers.